Should I get started? Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, so my name is Anthony Chu. I am a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. And today, I get to talk to you about two of my most favorite things, Azure Functions and Azure Signal R Service. Azure Signal R is a fully managed real-time messaging service. Um, it's been in generally available since September of last year. And how it works is that you can have a bunch of clients, and these clients can be web apps, mobile apps, desktop apps, or even games. And they connect to Azure Signal R service using WebSockets. And if a given connection, for some reason, doesn't support WebSockets, it'll actually fall back gracefully to, to use server sent events or even long tolling um, for that one given connection. And a single instance of Azure Signal R service supports up to 100,000 concurrent connections. And if you need more, um, there's actually strategies available to create multiple instances and make them work together. So now that we have all these kind of connections, right, um, what can we do with it? So the simplest thing we can do is to just send a message to everybody, and that's called a broadcast. But we can do kind of more interesting things um, by um, associating a user ID with every connection. So now we can send a message just to one user ID. And then it's going to go to all the connections that are um, associated with that user. And then we can also put users um, into one or more arbitrary groups. And then when that happens, we can now send a message to a group and only connections that are put in that group will receive the message. And we can use Azure Functions to, send, uh, to tell Azure Signal R service to send messages to connected clients. Um, this opens up a lot of scenarios um, because Azure Functions supports a lot of um, triggers, including uh, HTTP, timers, um, queue messages, um, event hubs, um, to, or even like Cosmos DB change feed. So a lot of things can now um, send messages um, to connected clients using SignalR service. Um, lots of languages to support it. So on the function side, um, we support JavaScript, TypeScript, C Sharp, and Java. And also PowerShell and Python are currently in preview. And then clients that can connect to SignalR service, um, we have SDKs for JavaScript and TypeScript, as well as .NET standard. That means Xamarin apps are supported as well. And also, we have an SDK for Java. So here's just some examples of apps that I built over the last few months. So like everybody else, I start off with the chat app. Um, so this chat app does um, in integrates with app service authentication. So I can log in using Twitter. And then I can type messages and send messages to everybody. Um, I can also click on a person's um, user ID and then send them a private message um, using that send to user um, functionality I talked about earlier. Um, this is a collaborative whiteboarding app. So you can see that there's not a lot of latency there. It actually works quite well. And then here I have an Azure durable function that's playing back some flight data that I recorded. And then it's sending those over um, Azure SignalR to a map that's on a web page. And here I have a document in Cosmos DB. And I'm updating it. And when I click Update, it, um, it triggers a change feed event that then triggers an Azure function that, um, that, that sends the update to connected clients. And then lastly, um, I'm using a board here um, called an MX chip. And that's reading temperature and humidity data and then sending that off to Azure IoT Hub. And then I have an Azure function listening to messages on IoT Hub. And it's um, sending that out to once again, over signal our service to a web page and it's getting plotted out. So that's all pretty cool. Let's talk about what's new since, um, um, since I last spoke about this at Ignite. So um, I guess the biggest one is that the functions binding for signal our service are now generally available. And they also support groups now. So you can send messages to groups using the output bindings for Azure Functions. And we also added support for Java and PowerShell. And Python's on the way, we're working on that. Um, this is a link to a sort of like a serverless um, developer guide for SignalR service, if you want to note that down. So how do we get started? Um, the first thing we want to do to get started is to create a SignalR instance. To do this, you click the little um, plus button on, at, on, on, on the Azure portal. And then we kind of, just like any Azure resource, you give it a name, resource group, stuff like that. 
Um, we can choose the free tier, which supports up to 20 concurrent connections. That's pretty good for small apps and also dev and test. And then we'll also want to make sure that we select serverless um, mode so that um, Azure Functions can work with it. So let's talk about how we can use Azure Functions to send messages. But before we do that, um, an Azure, a SignalR client actually needs to talk to, talk to an HTTP endpoint to receive a token that it can use to connect to SignalR service. So we need to create an HTTP endpoint in Azure Functions using an HTTP trigger. It's actually not too difficult. Um, we have to make sure that we name it negotiate. That's something that the client expects. Um, but after that, all we need to do is just bring in an input binding for the SignalR connection info. That will hand us a token um, along with the endpoint information for our um, SignalR instance that we can return directly to the client. Um, but we can do more kind of complicated things in here if we wanted to. So for instance, if we want to authenticate this particular request to a user, we can actually stick a user ID into um, that token that we give back. So now when the client connects to um, uh, Azure SignalR service with this token, we can send them messages directly to that user ID. Um, so this is all Java code I've been showing you. Um, at Ignite, I showed C Sharp and JavaScript, so I thought I'd kind of change it up a little bit. So this is how you would connect from a Java client. Um, it's pretty simple. You create a connection, give it the function's URL, and then you say start. Not too much to it. And now to send messages, this is back in our Java function now. Um, all we have to do is add two lines of code. One is to bring in the output binding for signal R and tell it which hub to send to. And then we just need to return one or more messages for um, the output binding to send off to SignalR service and then to be relayed off to our clients. Pretty simple. And on the client side, um, so at the top and the bottom are the code that we kind of saw before to make the connection. So before we call start, we want to um, set up a bunch of event handlers. Um, so this new message is an event that I'm sending from the service. And um, we just have to react to it. In this case, I'm just printing it out. And then some more advanced functionality, if you want to um, add users to a group and send to a group. So um, we can use the exact same SignalR output binding to do this. Um, but instead of sending a SignalR message to the output binding, we're giving it a SignalR group action object. Um, and the group action um, can be either add or remove. And we have to give it a group name as well as the user ID. Pretty straightforward. And then the binding will take care of the rest. And now to send a message to a group, um, it's just like we did before, but we have to set an extra property called the group name, and now this message will only go to connections in that group. All right, so now we get to see some real demos. Um, actually, I have some more slides. So the first one I'm going to show is using the new um, PowerShell functions that we announced last week. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to have some changes that happen in my Azure subscription. That's going to trigger some events in uh, Event Grid. And then Event Grid will, in turn, trigger in an Azure function. And, and then that Azure function will use some PowerShell to get more information from Azure about that resource and then send that information off to basically a browser. So this is kind of what it looks like. This is the app. And then I will go ahead and create a function app. I'll call this build demo 9, because I've been practicing for quite a bit. And I'll click Create. And then make sure this closes, meaning that it's going to get started deploying the app. And there it goes. So I'm going to flip back over. And then if we keep watching this, um, we should see some, uh, some stuff show up there. And while that happens, we're going to go show you the code. All right, so a, uh, a PowerShell function is pretty simple. Um, it consists of two files. You can see a message already, has already come in. Um, it, so the first file is function.json. It describes what um, input and output bindings as well as triggers for this function. So you can see I have an event grid trigger and then and, uh, a signal R output binding defined. Pretty straightforward. And then the actual PowerShell file, um, it's very simple. Um, by default, this PowerShell script automatically logs into Azure um, using the app's identity. 
So it's using that identity to actually talk to Azure to, um, to do its work. So you can see here that um, I'm, I am receiving an event grid message. And then I'm just plucking out the resource ID from that message. Um, using the AZ resource um, PowerShell um, commandlet, I am getting more information about this resource. And then here is the PowerShell way of outputting to an output binding. Um, this is literally just a giant object that I'm sending back. And this is the event that I'm raising on the client side. So now in the client, it's just a very simple Vue.js application. It's about 100 lines long. Most of it is just CSS. Um, uh, but this is the, the meat of the code right here. Um, you can see there, um, just like the Java one, I am creating a new hub connection, giving it the um, functions URL. And then I'm setting up an event handler on the new resource event. And then all I'm doing is that I'm taking that object that got sent to me from Signal R service, and I'm just sticking it onto the front of an array. And then Vue.js takes care of painting that onto the screen. I didn't have to do anything. And then, of course, I call start on the connection so that that kick starts everything. And that's it. So you can see that um, my function app's been created, and all the resources that kind of got created are shown on the screen with the additional information. All right. So the next demo is with something that we announced this morning, I believe, um, called Durable Entities. So I'm not going to go too much into it. Um, we're going to have another session about this tomorrow. Um, but what, um, what Durable Entities do is that it Im implements an actor-like pattern. Um, and what that allows us to do is that it allows us to maintain state in an entity and also tell an entity to, main, uh, to mutate state. Um, so that, and we can do this all without a database. So um, instead of talking about it, I'll kind of show you kind of an app that does this. So, and this is the interactive part of the presentation. So if you don't mind taking out your phones, you can actually go ahead and go to aka.ms slash voting app. And then I have a very simple application here, a voting application, with a very controversial question um, about tabs and spaces. So when you, when you tab on this, oh, people are already there. Um, when you tab on this, um, what's happening is that it's actually sending an HTTP request to a function, and then that is telling a, a durable entity to increment um, that particular vote. So I'll show you the code right here. And it's pretty straightforward. So this is an HTTP trigger that's actually, um, every time you press the button, it's calling. Um, the only interesting line of code is this one here. I'm basically signaling a, um, an entity to increment. And then I'm passing the choice that you, um, that, that, that you clicked on. And that's it. And then the entity itself, um, th that's all it is. Um, it has a new trigger called entity trigger. And then um, the first thing that it does is that it grabs a state. Um, so the state, um, it's just a dictionary of votes. And then um, I'm also grabbing the choice as the input. And then here, I'm literally just doing some very simple math, which is incrementing the choice by one. And then I am using the SignalR output binding to send that message. And then that's it. There's not much more to it. Like, literally, these are just helper functions. Um, and then the HTML looks exactly like it was before. So let's see the results. Holy cow, it's very close between spaces and tabs. Um, I don't like half of you. I don't think we can get along. And then that bottom section there, I don't know. This is. I don't know about that. Um, so you can keep voting. Go nuts. Um, and the session that's going to talk about this tomorrow is by Matthew Henderson in the back there. Um, note this down. Same place, same time, different day. So the last demo that I'll show you is um, apparently in the keynote yesterday, they kind of showed some live transcription and translation. Um, they made it sound like it's super fancy, super hard to do, um, but I'm going to show you that it's really not. Um, I literally did almost no work to do this. Um, so here's kind of like the architectural diagram, I guess. So um, let's kind of take a picture of that in your mind, and I'm going to show you the code. So this is a Vue.js application. Um, so this is the JavaScript that's running on the client side. I am bringing in the Cognitive Services Speech SDK. Notice that I haven't done any work yet. Um, and then um, I am telling it to please listen to the microphone on my, um, on, my, on my laptop. Again, I still have not done any work. 
And then I'm telling it that I'm going to start speaking English, or whatever the heck I'm speaking right now. And then um, I'm giving it um, one or more languages to translate, it, uh, to translate to as well. So I'm passing six languages in this case. And then I'm telling the, I'm telling the translation recognizer to start. And then what this is going to do is it's literally going to go and um, grab a hold of the microphone, um, capture my voice, send it off to the cloud, um, transcribe it, translate it, download it back to the browser. Remember, I haven't done, I haven't done anything yet. This is all the SDK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, um, basically the translations, shoot that off the Signar service to, to be re relayed off to you all. Um, so this is pretty much all the JavaScript code there is on that side. Um, I have a little bit more JavaScript code here that actually posts the translations to a functions endpoint, but you know four lines of code. So so far I've done four lines of code. Um, and then the next thing that I'm going to show you is the actual function itself. So I've written this function in JavaScript, and um, so this is the function that receives the captions. Um, here I'm just making sure that it's myself, so you all can't mess with uh, mess with me. So that's what I'm doing up here. Um, down here, all I'm doing is that I'm splitting up the six languages or the six times translations that I got into six different Signal R messages, and I'm sending those out. And you can notice that I'm sending them out to a group named after the language that I'm sending it to. And then when a client connects, it's going to call a um, another Azure function to select the language. So um, when it calls the the, um, this function, what it's going to do is that it's going to output a bunch of SignalR group actions. And what this mess of JavaScript here that I've written does is that for every language that we have, um, if it's not one that the person has selected, I'm going to um, send a remove group action. And then the, for the one that they've selected, I'm going to send an add to group action. And that's really it. So, so far, I guess I've probably written about 20 lines of code. Um, and then back on the client side, I am basically, um, you'll probably find the exact same code as before. I'm listening to a connection, and I'm not doing too much more than that, right? About a you know, 100 lines of code. So now let's try to see if this app actually works. So I want you all to go to aka.ms slash caption R, because apparently every signal R app has to end in R. So I'm going to do that. And we're going to all go there. Um, it should start up. Hopefully, my Wi Fi is working. What it should do is it should pull back the languages, which is not right now. Uh oh. The bug on stage. This is horrible. Well, that's fine. Oh, there it is. Okay. So now I'm connected. So this is the client. So you all should be using the client. I'm going to open up another window. And this one is locked down to me. So I'm actually going to host this session. So you can see that I'm using Twitter authentication to prevent you um, from doing this as well. And I'm going to click Start. And then it's actually going to start grabbing my voice and sending that to the cloud. You can see it's relaying it to the other um, browsers. And then I can go over here, and I can switch over to any other language I want. And, and you can see that I'm actually listening in that language. Um, that's pretty cool. But that's not all. So my friend, James Mondemagno, um, decided to build a Xamarin app with this as well. So we're going to show you that as well. So it's pretty simple. You can see pretty much the code looks the same. I don't know how to make it bigger. Um, but it's just listening to the same hub, but this is using the .NET um, Framework SDK. And then I'm going to go ahead and start this app. I'll make that a little bit bigger. Hopefully, the app starts. It's connecting, and it's connected. I'm going to go ahead and grab the languages. And once it grabs the language, it's going to start receiving um, as well. But now we're running in Xamarin. So um, it's really easy to get started with pretty much any language. And as you can see, pretty much any platform can work with SignalR and SignalR service.
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Whoa, what's happening here? <laughs> this is still going. This is great. I want to see how far this goes. Um, so um, just to wrap up, so some more Sig Noir at Build. I think mine's in the last session, but yesterday um, James had a session on Xamarin and Sig Noir. And then it was also part of the ASP.NET Core session as well. And then lots of Azure Functions um, sessions at Build. Um, like I said, the one that I want to point out is the last one there by Matthew. That's going to go a lot more in depth into durable entities. And um, all the resources that I have, all the source code that I showed um, are at this URL here. Feel free to reach out to me on email or Twitter. Um, and with that, thanks so much for coming out. <laughs>